In this problem, I need to graph this function here, f of x equals 1 half raised to the x plus 2 minus 3. We need to state how it's obtained from its parent graph, and we also must draw and label any asymptotes. So the first thing we better do is figure out who the parent graph is. So the parent graph is the exponential function y equals 1 half raised to the x power. And I think it's better to start with if we actually graph the parent graph, and then we're going to shift it to obtain our graph of f of x. Okay, I'm going to graph three accurate points. And the easiest ones to do for exponential functions are when x is negative 1, 0, and 1. So when x is negative 1, I'm plugging into my parent graph here. I'm going to get 1 half to the negative 1. Remember, if we ever have a fraction raised to a negative exponent, it's the reciprocal raised to the positive exponent. So the reciprocal of a half is 2. So 2 to the first is 2. Then I'm going to have when x is 0, I'm going to have 1 half to the 0 power, which remember is 1. And lastly, 1 half to the first power, which is 1 half. So now I'm going to graph these points. So I have the points negative 1, 2. 0, 1, and 1, a half. And then we're going to draw a dotted line for the parent graph. So it's going to come down and go through these points. This pen's very hard to graph with, so bear with me. And we have a horizontal asymptote on the parent graph of the x-axis, which has the equation y equals 0. Now we've drawn in the parent graph, we have to figure out how it, the graph of f of x is going to be obtained from that parent graph. So let me write f of x out again. So f of x is 1 half raised to the x plus 2 minus 3. And so we have two effects going on with this graph. We've got the plus 2 that's inside the function with the x. And so this is going to be a horizontal effect. And remember, horizontal always does the opposite of what you think. Plus 2 horizontally is going to shift it left to, not right to. And then we've got the minus 3. This is outside the function, after the function. So this is going to be a vertical effect, and it is going to shift down 3 units. And if you remember your order of operations, we always do horizontal shifts first, and we do vertical shifts last. So let's take our first point right here, and we're going to shift it left 2, down 1, 2, 3. So it's going to go to negative 3, negative 1. So it's going to go right here. Now we're going to take our next point, which is 0, 1, go left 2, down 1, 2, 3. I'm going to be at negative 2, negative 2. So it's going to be right here. And then my other point is going to be here at 1, a half. And it's going to go left 2, down 1, 2, 3. So it's going to be at negative 1, negative 2.5. So negative 1, negative 2.5, right about there. So there are my three points. Now I've got to figure out what is going to happen to my asymptote y equals 0. So let's take a point here on my asymptote, and if I move it left 2, it's still on my the same asymptote. But then when I move it down 3, you can see the y value has changed to negative 3. Let's do another point, left 
2 down 1, 2, 3. Y value is going to be negative 3. So hopefully you can see that the new asymptote for my graph of f of x is going to be y equals negative 3. And my graph is going to look something like this. Okay, so there is my graph of f of x with its accompanying asymptote. And it doesn't hurt to find a checkpoint. That means put a value for x in here that we've already figured out from our transformations. Let's pick x equals negative 3. So as our checkpoint, let's figure out what is f of negative 3. Well, it's 1 half raised to the negative 3 plus 2, and then we're going to subtract 3 from the answer. So that's 1 half raised to the, what is negative 3 plus 2? Negative 1 minus 3. So remember, 1 half to the negative 1 is 2, so 2 minus 3 is negative 1. So negative 3, negative 1 should be on my graph. Is it negative 3, negative 1? That's what we got by transformations.